Wow, it is just amazing to me. Like literally, absolutely, positively amazing that as much as they try and keep this guy down, he keeps coming back for more. This is incredible, you guys. This is some very good news for Donald Trump and perhaps those of you that support him right now because you know that SPAC deal? We're going to get into what all of that is. Well, it turns out it's like worth a lot of money. Like seriously, a lot of money. Enough so much that, well, maybe he could actually handle the $354 million. Not that, I mean, look, look, he's worth a lot of money. But the reality is this. People just don't have that kind of cash laying around, period. You know, you got to get a bond, this, that, and the other in order to do it. So some good news for Donald Trump. But let me tell you, he sure came out swinging. Did he not on Friday? Pretty just wild to see. Welcome to the program. I am Trish Regan. This is Trish Regan Show. If you haven't subscribed already, do me that favor. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like. Make sure you share. We have a lot to discuss. I can't believe I was gone on Friday. I can't believe this was like the biggest. I mean, we had Fannie Willis. We had Donald Trump. And now today... We have the news that the valuation on this company, True Social, is just enormous. So we're going to get into all of that. But first of all, let's back up for just a second, because over the weekend, over the weekend, Donald Trump was out there selling some, what, $399 shoes? Drew, do we have those clips from SneakerCon? Who knew? I just want to tell you, you know, I've wanted to do this for a long time. I have some he pulled a woman up on things. stage. This was they pretty awesome to see. Pulled a woman out of the crowd who just started years, basically years. saying, oh, my gosh, we love you. We I love you. They keep trying success. to take this guy down. That's and here he deal. is. He comes back. He keeps coming back for more. And he's stronger and better. And we, we love him for that reason. I want to play you this clip of this lady there in the audience. He brings her right up on stage. And I'm telling you, she got it. Because given the news about True Social, he really does somehow manage to just keep coming back no matter what they try. Watch. We're going to turn this country around fast. We're going to turn it around fast. And we're going to remember the... Or maybe not. We're going to have... Drew, we're going to, we're going to work on that. Because I, I think we have that clip. It's this lady at, at SneakerCon... It's this wonderful clip where she's like, oh my gosh, Donald Trump, we love you, we love you, we love you. And it was just one of those special moments. But in the meantime, you know, he's seething. He's really, really mad, ladies and gentlemen. He's mad as he has every right to be mad because that insane lawsuit out of New York City, I gotta tell you, like, I've been a business reporter my entire career, economics reporter, business reporter. This one takes the cake. Like, this one is just weird. This one is socialist style, Venezuela, Banana Republic, whatever you want to call it. I've said that all along. Of all the cases, this is the most outrageous, and it's the biggest fine. You're talking about 354 million bucks. He was furious. So he went out immediately outside at Mar-a-Lago on Friday. Let's watch clip one. Clip two, rather. New York State judge just ruled, and he's crooked as you can get. And a lot of people expected something like this, but not for the amount. Uh, but this is a very dishonest man. This is a man that's been overturned already on this case four times. But a crooked New York State judge just ruled that I have to pay a fine of $355 million for having built a perfect company. Uh, great cash, great buildings, great everything. It affects New York. It's mostly talking about New York, where we have a totally corrupt attorney general. She campaigned on the fact that I will get Trump, I will get Trump. Everybody's seen it. Leticia James, they've all seen it. Well, we'll be appealing, but more important than that, this is Russia, this is China, this is the same game. All comes out of the DOJ, it all comes out of Biden. It's a witch hunt against his political opponent, the likes of which our country has never seen before. You see it in third world countries, banana republics, but you don't see it here. Okay, so that was Donald Trump. My audio on my end, believe it or not, guys, is not, is not, a, it's not playing in my ears. So we're going to have to do work on that for a technical issue. And in the meantime, I want to play you a little bit more because Donald Trump, again, just seething and making the point that this is not how we operate. There he was at Mar-a-Lago Watch. I just want to say this. You build a great company. There was no fraud. The banks all got their money, 100%. They love Trump. They testified that Trump is great, great customer, one of our best customers. They testified beautifully. And the judge knows that. He's just a corrupt person. And we knew that from the beginning. We knew it right from the beginning because he wouldn't give it to the commercial division. This judge thought Mar-a-Lago is worth $18 million and it's worth anywhere from 50 
to 100 times that amount. So we realized that. He ruled against me before he even got the case. He ruled against me. He said I was guilty. He didn't know what I was guilty of before he even got the case. And Letitia James, that's another case altogether. She's a horribly corrupt attorney general, and it's all having to do with election interference. There were no victims because the banks made a lot of money. They made $100 million. And by the way, I paid approximately $300 million in taxes as the migrants come in and they take over New York. I paid over this period of years over $300 million in taxes, and they want me out. Oh, let's see if we can get them out. These are radical left Democrats. They're lunatics, and it's election interfering. So I just want to thank you for being here. Uh, we'll appeal. We'll be successful, I think, because, frankly, if we're not successful, New York State is gone. People are moving out of New York State. And because of this, they're going to move out at a much faster rate. They used a statute. It's a consumer fraud statute that's never been used for a thing like this before. They used it on me because I'm running for president. I'm beating Biden by a lot. We're beating not only the Republicans. We're beating Biden by a lot. The poll came out today. We're up 20 points on Biden. If I weren't running, none of this stuff would have ever happened. None of these lawsuits would have ever happened. Nothing would I would have had a nice life. But I enjoy this life for a different reason. We're going to make America great again. These are corrupt people. These are people that shouldn't be allowed to do the things they do. And they're using this as... <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, he's telling it like it is. You're hearing it like it is. My gosh, Donald Trump really... Furious. And again, I would just say this, guys. He has every right to be this angry. This will go to an appeals court. It absolutely will. And it'll probably get turned around or it's going to be a way smaller fine. I don't even think there's going to be a fine because let's go back to the original issue here. Just exactly where's your victim? Right? I mean, for this case to have gone forward like this, you, you've got Deutsche Bank, which made the loan at its own risk, as banks do. And they made the decision that he was a worthwhile credit risk. And they got paid with interest. So again, where's the actual crime other than this just being a total political mess? And let's face it, that's what these DAs do. These DAs campaign. This woman in particular campaigned aggressively on getting Trump. And that's exactly what she's out to do. Make a name for herself. What is wrong with the American judicial system when we got people that are more interested in making names for themselves than actually preserving the dignity of, of, frankly, your rights as an American citizen. So he's going to come up with the money now. And it's not going to be like a bail bond or anything, but he is probably going to have to take out some kind of loan against his assets. He better be careful how much he puts his assets down as being worth, right? Because would, would this woman come back, this, this Letitia James, is she going to come back and say, uh-uh, oh, we think you misstated the valuation again. It is nuts. It is totally nuts. And by the way, I'm not the only one saying this. The Shark Tank guy, my friend Kevin O'Leary, he's saying it too. I'm going to get to that in a second. But first, again, back to Donald Trump there, outside Mar-a-Lago, blasting New York City. Take a peek. Ridiculous award. This is a fine of $355 million for doing a perfect job, for having paid back a loan with no defaults, with no problems, the banks were totally, t you know, at the trial, they testified. We had an expert witness from the Stern School at NYU that made a statement. He, and I was very honored by his statement. He's one of the most respected people anywhere in the country for doing this kind of thing, expert witness. He said, this is one of the greatest financial statements I have ever witnessed before. And he talked about even the detail. So my numbers actually were extremely conservative. They saw this, so what the judge did is he brought down certain values like Mar-a-Lago, made it ridiculous. But the expert, after having all of this, testified to one of the best financial statements he's ever seen. And I was honored by that. But I also knew we have a corrupt judge. He's not a respected man. And again, I said before, he's been overturned on this case by the appellate division four times already. It's a record. Nobody's ever been overturned on one case four times. And I think very importantly, and I think ultimately the most important, we've employed tens of thousands of people in New York, and we pay taxes like few other people have ever paid in New York, and they don't care about that. They, it's, a, it's a state that's going bust, 
It's a state that's going bust because everybody's leaving. And it's all headed up by Biden, who's destroying our country. So this is Russia. This is China. This is what you've been reading about all your lives. And it's happening right here in our country. Thank you very much. We will stop it. We will make America great again. You have my word. Thank you very much. Oh, my gosh. You know what? Like, he's right on this one. Okay, I'm sorry. Regardless of what you think about Donald Trump, what just went down in the city of New York, this $354 million fine is positively, utterly outrageous. He has every right to be furious. He has every right to appeal. He will succeed in the appellate court, in my estimation. Look, I'm no lawyer, but I'm a financial journalist, and I know, I know, when I see an absolutely insane item, like this one, totally political, totally charged, it really makes me upset as an American to see this because no one should be in that position. I mean, think about it. Think about this. They're trying to bankrupt him, clearly. So they're like, okay, you got 354 million bucks you want to cough up? Like people, I don't care how wealthy you are, you don't have that hanging around. In order to actually give that money over, guess what? You'd have to sell some assets. So you'd have to say, okay, let me sell this, let me sell that. So what, they're going to force him to have a fire sale so that he can pay off this loan, which is probably going to get turned around in appellate court anyway? You understand what they're trying to do. This is aggressive Venezuela. He said it. It's like socialism. It's communism. He made the point of Russia or China. This is not right, ladies and gentlemen. It's not right. He knows it. I know it. You know it. And you know what? The American people know it. So all those people that are in the middle and they're maybe on the fence are like, oh, I don't know about Trump. They look at this thing going down and they're like, oh boy, you know what? That's a lot of money. And it's not right. So the thinking here is that you'd have to go and borrow this money. Now, interest rates are low. I guess, you know, he's got that going for him. The other thing he's got going for him is Donald Trump's actually a really good credit risk right now, thanks to none other than this deal, which just got approved by the SEC. So I don't know how many of you are on True Social. I'm over there. In fact, we put out a, a notice that we were going to be right here right now over on True Social at Trish Regan. So True Social was designed to be kind of a conservative competitor to Twitter. And then, of course, Elon Musk came along and he bought Twitter for some, what, $44 billion, pretty high valuation. And he's dealing with the ups and downs of all of that. And True Social has sort of just been still there. And Donald Trump puts out various truths on it, etc. Now, part of the reason perhaps you're seeing the success and in the stock price right now, I mean, it just soared the other day with this news. It's just been going up, 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 up in a way. And the reason for that is because there was some hesitation about whether or not it could do this merger with this SPAC. I can get into this. I know a lot about this. SPAC is like a dirty word on Wall Street, right? Because people worry about it. There have been great SPACs. I mean, Burger King was taken public via a SPAC. They're trying to take Donald Trump's media company, which owns True Social, public so that you can invest in it. Everybody can invest in it via a SPAC. The SPAC is basically the combination of this company, DWAC, Digital World Acquisition Corporation, and Trump Media. So at first, like the SEC is like, no, 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 you can't do this deal. And then on Friday, it came out, oh, you can. So now the merger's going through. It's happening in March. And so Trump has all these shares at 10 bucks each. Okay, so let's just check the stock price right now. I think it's off from some of the highs that we saw on Friday. But it's incredible because DWAC, this one, Digital World Acquisition Corporation, it's down today, $44.88, down about 7.5%, rather significant. But I have a feeling this is going to be a totally bumpy, bumpy, bumpy ride between now and the deal closing in March. SEC cleared the way for the deal to close, which means, oh, Donald Trump, he could be worth a lot of money right now. I mean, we're talking... He might have just made, it's been estimated, anywhere from $4 billion to the Reuters estimate, which is the highest I've seen, some $10 billion on this deal. He owns like 78% of the company. You can just feel the anger. You can feel them seething over at CNN when this reporter came on and like crunched the numbers the other day. It's actually pretty funny because they've got to be like, oh my gosh, after all we've done to keep him down, what do you know? Check it out. Category. Is there any good financial news for Trump? Yeah, so very interesting. And Audie, in fact, was the one who pointed this out to me. Trump's true social share worth. So back in 2022, it was about 700 million. Last year, it was less than 100 million. 
But there's this idea, essentially, that Truth Social will, in fact, be able to go public. And how much would Trump's shares be worth if it does, in fact, go public? It could be upwards of $4 billion. That's billion with a B, not million with an M. Now, of course, keep in mind that Trump can't sell these stocks for another six months. But the fact is, we've had all this bad news for Trump. This could be good financial news for Donald Trump. Harry, and great to see you. This yeah, great to see you, you jerk. <laughs> we really didn't need to hear that today. But let's think this out, okay? So we're in February, so March, April. Well, let's say the deal closes in March. So we'll go with that. March, April, May, June, July, August, September. Wow, he could be looking like he might win the Oval Office again. And the stock might just keep on going up, riding that wave going into September. I mean, this is all speculation on my part. Don't, don't treat any of this as investing advice. I'm going to give that qualifier. Let's be very clear on that. Well, I'm just talking about Donald Trump. If it continues to move up like this, guys, then, well, not like it is today, right? Down 7%. But if it, if it trades in the range that we saw as soon as this deal was announced, and it's quite possible that as you get closer to the deal actually happening, you do see this activity, then wow, he's going to make off with some $4 billion or on the high end, $10 billion. I mean, the, the beauty of a SPAC for one of the initial investors is they don't even have to do the deal, right? They can take their $10 and go home. He was effectively given these shares at $10 each, and he'll get the spread between whatever that, that $10 is and whatever he winds up selling it at. So just amazing because as much as they try and keep him down, keep him down, we're going to bankrupt him now. Oh, what do you know? He's making money. He is making money still, despite all of them, which is just really, really, really amazing. I mean, whether or not you think the company's worth it, that's a whole other discussion. Don't forget, Elon Musk paid $44 billion for Twitter. And in my estimation, that was completely more than he should have. Although I did tell you that deal was going to go through, didn't I? I mean, the Delaware courts... They, they don't exactly allow deals to just collapse. So remember all of that. Meanwhile, let's get back to the what the heck is New York City doing? This Letitia James. I'm sorry, this political, politically charged person. I'm going to be, <laughs> I'm keeping it clean. I'm keeping it nice. But she's a very highly political person who's very much all about herself, her agenda, her name recognition. And this case was about that and that only. Because a normal person actually wouldn't have brought this case because they would have said, well, where are the damages? Where's your victim? Right? Like, oh, investors did fine. Shareholders did fine. Well, let this be a warning. I've seen all over the mainstream media. Everybody's out like, oh, let this be a warning. Let this be a warning. A warning? Wait, so you, you pay your bills? You, you pay your debt holders and, and it's a warning? Yeah, apparently. Uh, you know, this is, this is like one more thing that New York City doesn't need, frankly. New York City is increasingly looking like a disaster, a total disaster to me from an economic standpoint. I mean, you look at the crime levels, you look at the, the lack of police control. I mean, the fact that so many of those guys could just walk away uh, with the, the, the horrific situation in Times Square recently, the migrants that had beaten up some New York City police officers, and not all of them were jailed. Many of them just walked away, some without bail. I mean, that is horrific to me. So you get that going on, you get the migrant crisis overall, crime, all of these issues, and then New York City adds this into it. I mean, don't forget, you're paying 4% income tax to live there. So anybody who can is out. Think about it. You're paying federal income tax, you're paying state income tax. I can't remember what it is in the state of New York, maybe around 9%, might be 11%. All I know is like, I was psyched when I left New York City because I was like, I, this is crazy. And then you pay the 4% too. I mean, before you know it, everything is getting turned over to Uncle Sam, AKA Uncle Joe, ladies and gentlemen, Uncle Joe. So maybe Uncle Joe needs to collect a little less. Maybe this is a reason and incentive for more and more businesses to pack up and move out. We've seen so many already going, for example, to the state of Florida, right? They're all going there. My gosh. Well, Kevin O'Leary has a few things to say about this, and he kind of got into it. I actually want to start, Drew, with the, the clip, if we have it, if you would, from CNN first. We'll go to, he, he was also on with my former colleague over at Fox, Neil Cavuto, and they were talking the same language a little bit more. But this one, to me, is really kind of funny, because the CNN people are like, 
oh, what do you mean? What do you mean? How could you possibly say this? Kevin O'Leary, Mr. Shark Tank guy. But Kevin gets it. He's a business person. And why the heck would you start a business or want to operate a business in the state of New York if you know that just because of your politics, Letitia James and company could come straight at you? Hey, forget about it. See you later. I'll move to Florida. Thank you very much. Watch. And the Trump organization, because there's probably a lot who are saying to themselves, I've never falsified my business records. I know what a square foot looks like. I know what, what I can ask for and what I have the money to support. So I, I wonder to what extent that really is true. But on the second point, wouldn't there be many companies who would not want to do business or loan money to people like yourself or investors if they know that they can get away with fraud and there's no recourse to protect them? Excuse me, what fraud? I don't, I, this is not about Trump anymore. When you I know. get a developer, when you get a developer that builds a building and he says it's worth $400 million and he wants to borrow $200 million from a bank, which happens every day, everywhere on earth, including every American city, every developer is an entrepreneur. They shine the light on their building and they say it's worth 400. The bank does its own due diligence, as was done in this case, because they're very good at it. The banks are very good. And they say, no, it's worth 300. We're only going to loan you 150 million. That haggling has gone on for decades. That's how it works. And then in this case, even the bank that was supposedly defrauded testified and said, we didn't lose anything. We want to do business with this guy again. We'd like to. But the judge said, no, 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 no. Let's penalize this developer for 355 million. And we're going to do that. Let's penalize all the developers all across America. They've all done the same thing. All of them should go to jail and we should stop building buildings. That's what the message is from New York. Even the governor herself is concerned about what this looks like to investors all around the world. It's not just U.S. domestic. All well, around the world, people are talking about what happened here. You really think people want to invest money in New York after this? How about we go well, somewhere I, I else? Think, how, I think there are to, people who would, I don't want to cut you off, but I, I want to converse well, with you, you instead. You just did. I, it's, it's only because I want you to have a conversation, a, you know what? Kevin, I as opposed you, to just you, having you tell you me. I respect you because you're a lawyer. You're a lawyer. You understand no. exactly what I'm talking about. I got to tell you, I'm, I'm respectable for a number of reasons, Kevin O'Leary, but being a, a lawyer is one of those issues. But I'll tell you, when I, when I hear your conversation, and I do want to oh converse gosh. with you about this point, I understand that there are legitimate concerns that were raised during the trial and will continue to be raised about who the quote unquote, what, who is actually bringing the suit. It wasn't the banks who were saying that we as consumers are unsophisticated feel this way. But Letitia James, the Attorney General, and I know you want to expand beyond Trump, has suggested, well, it's about making the playing field level for those who are not the major and billionaire investors, but for those who are supposed to put business records out there, want to get a loan, the idea of making sure that they have to have the same true statements included as those who have a lot more money. Is there any weight to that for you? Well, I ask you. Who lost money? And I make it even clearer. You and I, we're developing a data center together. And I say to you, we can go to New York where this just happened. It's your money now. You're now an investor and you're taking risk. You're an entrepreneur with me, right beside me. We're together on the deal. Or I can show you Oklahoma, North Dakota, West Virginia, where the governors actually ran businesses. Let's go there where this never happened before. They have power, they have permits. They've got legislation that's supportive of entrepreneurship. Why would we go to New York? Why take the risk? My only point is, did we just diminish the great state of New York and the great people of New York? And shouldn't they ask for better management so they don't become a flyover state? Remember, New York has the highest taxes in the country, the worst regulatory environment, and it's incredibly mismanaged. And I'm pointing out now on top of that, you get this insanity. A, a victimless crime, and forget about Trump, it's not about Trump. I don't mm -hmm. care about Trump in this. I care about America, and I care about entrepreneurship, and I care about democracy, and the fairness. The judicial system is now being criticized. People are asking themselves, the bar of New York, is this judge rational to charge $355 million in a case where no one lost any money? Is that good for the people of New York? Should the people of New York wake up to this and say, what's happening to us? Why is this becoming so 
perverse. Why are we the focus of this injustice? And I have nothing to do with Trump. I'm not supporting Trump. I'm supporting American entrepreneurship. And New York is slowly becoming the number one loser state in America. I'm wow, <laughs> Kevin, for the win, buddy. Oh, my gosh. Did you see the look on her face? And then when he ever said, hey, you know what? I actually respect you because you're a lawyer. You got the legal background. In other words, also sort of trying to say, hey, listen, lady, like... <laughs> Put the legal thinking cap on for two seconds. This 354 million, I mean, it makes literally no sense. Absolutely, positively no sense. And again, whether you hate Trump, whether you love Trump, let's just be honest with each other, okay? It, I mean, wow, if you have absolutely no victim in a crime, if you have nobody that's been hurt, you have nobody that, that is saying, hey, wait a second, I didn't get my money, then what, you're going to run around the country and, and do this to people? I mean, this is, this is something else. I mean, granted, right, I, whatever, you know, you, whatever the square footage is or whatever you think the valuation is on your property, you should be absolutely honest. Uh, don't get me wrong, but here's the thing. Real estate is in the eye of the beholder. I may think my house is worth something. You may think it's worth something else. Until it actually sells, guess what? It's all about the subjectivity of whoever wants the asset, thinks the asset is worth X when, you know, somebody else thinks it's worth Y. Again, until the trade closes, you don't know. You look around at different comps and you still say, well, you know what? My house has this, 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 and this. It's just insane. You know, Kevin absolutely gets it. He was also on, um, he's, he's a great guy, by the way. He's a very smart guy and obviously super successful. He used to come on all the time with me on Fox. We're going to get him on this, actually. I, I'll shoot him a text or something because this is just insane what's happened. Look at him here with Neil Cavuto, my former co-host, co-host, forgive me, co-worker at Fox. And uh, although occasionally we did kind of host a few things together, I can think about uh, some political things. And up in New Hampshire, that was always fun and interesting. Here he is. Doesn't matter Kevin, what this. the governor says. New York was already a loser state. Like California is a loser state. There are many loser states because of policy, high taxes, uncompetitive regulation. It was already on the top of the list of being a loser state. I would never invest in New York now. And I'm not the only person saying that. And here's a real time situation. In development in real estate right now, the hottest asset class is very high-end data centers. They cost anywhere from two and a half to three and a half billion each. They are very expensive. They require low power. You need permits. But most of the major institutions in the world need more data centers, and that's why developers like me are doing this. Now, you need power. So New York has Niagara Falls. Normally, you'd consider that to put in okay, one of these facilities. Go on that, you know, he's like, okay, jobs, has this, that, and the other. But you know what? If you don't have a normal rule of law if you don't actually have a way for people to have some recourse if everybody who is hated politically is suddenly vulnerable to lawsuits and 354 million dollar fines then guess what you're not gonna do any business in the state of new york i'm sorry and new york city effectively is supporting the rest of the state where new york city has the extra four percent tax plus the state taxes etc i'm telling you businesses are going to high tail it out of New York City as they should, ladies and gentlemen. I did, I am so glad not to be working in New York anymore for a variety of reasons, as you well know. Quick reminder to make sure you subscribe. But I'm telling you, this is why it's really important. What is at stake right now in 2024? It's not just what's going on overseas, which is critical. It's not just what's going on at the border. It's actually sort of your legal safety and security, right? I mean, these are issues that are very, um, near and dear to our hearts. I mean, the vulnerability that you face if you're politically on the wrong side. I mean, we've seen this cancel culture on steroids, but we've also now seen that they're willing to take it to the court level. And it's super troubling. It's super troubling. It's one of the reasons why, listen, if you get a chance, go over and see my friends. I'm going to put their, uh, their name up here, JCN, Job Creators Network. Join JCN. That's where you need to go. Join JCN because these guys are really great. They are job creators networks. So they're, they're like all over the country trying to fight things just like this. And we need to fight it right now. I'm telling you, you can't allow one side to have the upper hand in all of these legal issues to just make a political decision. We don't like somebody. And when you don't like someone, 
Then you get to take them out. And not only take them out, you can bankrupt them. Thank you very much. I mean, that's what's really terrifying. It's one thing to get an indictment, right? You can indict a ham sandwich. But think about what just went down here. I know it's going to the appellate court. But, you know, Trump, maybe he can get the $354 million. Maybe he has to f sell some stuff. Or, as I said, we'll get back to the SPAC deal shortly. You go to True Social, you're going to have uh, quite a bit. Maybe, maybe $4 billion in a few weeks. We'll see. Could be more if you look at Reuters. So he'll have the money. But this is just, this is, this is unacceptable, totally unacceptable. So go over, check them out, J Job Creators Network, join JCN.com. They are fighting the good fight along with me right here on the show, as I'm sure you are if you're watching it. The reality is New York is in a bad, bad spot. And now you have people saying, okay, maybe I'm not going to invest there. You even have... Truckers saying, I'm not even going to drive my truck into New York City. Hey, you think you can play this kind of game, Letitia James? You think so? Well, what if, you know, we actually have some real power. What if we just said, hey, we're not going to bring all our eggs and all our milk and whatever else they're selling in New York City, much more exciting stuff than that, of course, into New York. Watch this woman. She went on a News Nation the other night, and she was doing an interview, and she's like, hey, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to drive my truck into New York City. Watch what's going to happen. Take a look. It could shut New York City down. Um, and, you know, I don't want to hurt the people of New York. That's not what I'm trying to do. But my part in it, if, if New York just loses 10%, just 10% of the trucks that go in there, their prices are gonna skyrocket on everything from milk to eggs to any type of goods that the consumer needs. And when that happens, it's gonna cost everybody more money. Yeah, but not every. So that boycott could hit prices. And you know what's sad about that? It's like the people that really can't afford it. I mean, they are most at a disadvantage in a city like New York, but this is outrageous. I do get back to this. The good news is for Donald Trump, when you look at shares of this SPAC deal that he's doing, I mean, again, it's, it's anyone's guess as to whether this holds long term. But if he's going into the White House and he's got a six month lockup, I mean, if these numbers stay steady anywhere where we saw them trading on Friday, then yes, ladies and gentlemen, he's going to have a fair amount of cash hanging around. So that's uh, the little bit of the silver lining, but it's just amazing, right? The irony, I guess, of all of this, because they keep trying to take him down. They keep hitting and hitting and hitting and hitting. And then he's like, ha huh? here I am. It's like the jack in the box, right? I'm back. I'm back for more. And every single time you do this, I go up in the polls and, oh, maybe I'll have more money. <laughs> it's kind of amazing. I mean, really and truly rather amazing. So amidst this sort of backdrop and the media freaking out over these higher polls, the White House and the Democrat Party are also like really, really nervous, right? Because they're like, oh, this guy, he might not be able to, when I say this guy, Joe Biden, he might not be able to pull it off. Well, I don't think he can. I mean, I think unfortunately for Joe Biden, he's really showing his age of 81 years old and people are like, okay, I don't want to go long to use a stock term. I don't want to go long on Biden, right? Because he'd be like 86 by the time he leaves. So some reporters picked up on this and you actually saw some articles being floated in the New York Times. Why? Because I think they want to get somebody else running. So the New York Times put out a series of opinion pieces and these headlines were like this. The question is not if Biden should step aside, it's how. And then there was another one uh, that said something kind of similar. Mr. President ditched the stuff about health. That's Maureen Dowd. And then there's a, another one. This was like all within the span of a couple of days, the challenges of an aging president. So the White House sees all these things coming forward. And what do you know? They pick up the phone and they send a letter to the networks and they're like, hey, you know what? You, you can't keep talking about his age. So of course, of course, the ladies at The View, which is like state media on steroids. I mean, if you think MSNBC is bad, and it's bad, trust me. I mean, this one is really something else. Between Joy Behar and Whoopi Goldberg and this sunny lady, listen to what she's saying here. I mean, this is, you can tell, like, she just takes the cue. Oh, what is it that you want, Mr. President? What is it that the White House wants? Boom, watch it. 
I just, you know, I don't think I need to see someone who has been twice impeached and is a disgrace and a one-term president with 91 counts facing him. I think it legitimizes him. I don't need to That's be true. gaslit by Trump. We all know who he is. We all know what he stands for. We also know that Biden debated him twice and just like sort of mopped the floor with him. If you look at any of the studies, yeah. every Ameri most Americans that watched it thought that Biden won, not only on policy, but on demeanor, especially. Does this person have the Trump. temperament to be the president? We know who Donald Trump is. I don't think you give him that type of platform. But I also, if, if Biden flubs, yeah. They'll go, be all over him. If Trump flops, if he doesn't well, show up, they'll be all over him. But here's the thing. A lot has happened since 2020. January 6th hadn't happened. Donald Trump needs to have to stand next to Joe Biden. Joe Biden needs to call him out on the unfitness because the reality is we but all at this table. You know? I would say he had nothing to do this with table, it. We all know who Donald Trump is. Nearly 80 million people voted for him. They need to see the juxtaposition of the two. Yeah, but you're not. They care. They Okay, give it up, because you know what? That's not going to happen if they have anything like Joy or Whoopi or the rest of them have anything to say about it. You know why? You think about the contrast there. I mean, the contrast we've seen before, and it wasn't pretty. Can you imagine it now? I mean, the only danger for Trump is that he would look as though he was coming across as a little bit mean because he'd be so much more with it than poor Joe, who, hey, even even Robert Herr in his 388 page report when he was talking about whether or not they should move forward with the prosecution of the president for those documents which he kept in his garage next to his Corvette even Robert Herr concluded that you know what he had diminished faculties and was a well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory so that would be the only downside I would see for Donald Trump because people might actually feel bad for Biden. But is that enough to vote for him? The ladies at The View, here they are setting it up. They're like, oh, he's not really old, but no, he should not do a debate because that would somehow legitimize, legitimize Donald Trump. I'm sorry, ladies, look, if he's the Republican nominee and by all signs right now, he's certainly going to be, then he's legit. Like you can't just take your ball and go home. You can't say, oh, like, this is not a legitimate candidate. He's going to be the Republican nominee for the presidency of the United States of America. So this is just a bunch more of their garbage, but they're going to keep putting it out there and over and over and over again, because why? Oh, well, the polls show you. The polls show you. Every stinking one of them, except for Quinnipiac, which we've talked about, which was close, but had Biden ahead, every single one has Trump way out in front. And think about that for a second, because typically people, when they're asked by the pollsters, who are you going to vote for? They don't even like to say Trump. So you could say, okay, is this like some kind of head fake? I don't think so. Because when I look into these polls and I look at each of the issues, what you see are things like a 20 point spread on the economy. Who's better, Trump or Biden? Or you'll see like a 30 point spread on the border, who's better, Trump or Biden. And then you'll see maybe a five point difference with who you're gonna vote for. So people are willing to tell you who they think is better on the various issues, but they don't usually go as far as to say who they were ultimately gonna vote for. So this is very much to Trump's advantage. And that's what you've seen certainly, um, certainly before. In other words, the, the polls are not always fully, totally accurate and it's an issue. But the reality is just this, I mean, Biden is old, and Trump has a lot of wind at his back. I want you to see, you know, when I say Biden's old, I've showed you clips. We, we don't need to rehash these. It's unfortunate, all right? He seems very, very lost. But in the clip I'm about to show you, like it was taped. Like this was edited. This was not live. His team, Camp Biden, put this one out there and they thought it was going to help them. And if you, I mean, if you're like me, you're going to watch this. Curious to see what you guys think. Because it's a live show, so I'm, I'm looking at your comments. If you look at this, it, first of all, it's like overly stereotypical. He's, he's there having dinner with an African-American family. They're eating fried chicken, and they're talking about basketball. So, okay, that's a little awkward in and of itself, <laughs> given Joe Biden's sort of history of saying the wrong thing among certain minority communities. I mean, if Trump said any of the things that he has said or called people boy as he has, believe me, you'd hear about it 
all day long. So he's there at the table eating dinner with these kids and family, and he seems so old. And I'm like, wait a second, you guys edited this. Couldn't you have gotten him to say the question twice or maybe sped it up or done something? Tell me what you think, watch. Well, I mean, you got chicken fingers, you got, you got all this. <laughs> I, I want the root of making sure I had the humor there. So tell me about you guys. What you doing these days? Why don't you share about your passion of sports? I'm playing AAU basketball right now. Are you really? You both, are you guard? Yes, sir. Now, what grade are you in? Seventh grade. Seventh grade. Right now, I'm just doing basketball, playing guard on the JV team for my school. All right, about the school. How are y'all doing in school? Why don't you tell the president about the school? Favorite thing about it is the business academy I'm in. We get to, like, travel, so we've been to, like, NC State, uh, Wake Tech, and we... You're kidding we, me. Yeah, we went to this small dry cleaning business, and it's just, it's cool. It's a great experience. I'm impressed. Is that a new program at the school? Yes, sir, it is. It just started just a couple of years ago. You know how much this guy loves you. You can just feel it, can't you? Yes, sir. Yeah. Your dad jumped in front of the okay. door for you. Okay, well, keep it going for a second. You, you don't have to stop it. I just... We're going to raise, so you got to be patient with us, you know what I mean? I see. <laughs> Go patient. I don't see how this helps him. Because, you know, he just seems like Pops, like a really old grandpa. Maybe he's less crotchety than he was the other day in that press conference when it came out that he was such a feeble old man, that's why they weren't going to prosecute on those documents. Okay, so he's less angry, less crotchety, but he seems like a really old grandfather. And that's kind of a problem. I mean, think about it. Patty Davis, the daughter of Ronald Reagan, who's obviously no fan of conservatives or Trump for that matter. Patty Davis was like, wait a second, my dad was 77 when he finished his second term. I mean, this guy would be 86 and he's an old 86 and we know what happened to President Reagan and Alzheimer's, etc. I mean, there are questions that need to be addressed. Patty Davis, let's watch her talk about her dad and age. The other big issue that has been in the forefront right now is the issue of age. Your father, when he was elected at the time, was the oldest person elected president 69. at 69. I know. Now, obviously, the president is in his 80s. Former President Trump, the front runner, is in his late 70s. Do you think there should be cognitive tests for people running for the highest office in the land? Probably, yeah. I mean, in just what we know about what age can do, it doesn't always do that, but um, it would probably be a good idea. Yeah, I know. My father was 77 when he left office after two terms. It seems so young now, doesn't it? Yes. Did it seem at the time old to you? We <laughs> talked about your dad. Yeah, as it being, might be a good at idea. The time, the I mean, president. hey, why um, not? Have a cognitive test. You know, when you go in and you do a physical, I actually just uh, had one a couple months ago, and like one of the things that they, they, they test like everything. Of course, I had like a super duper spiffed up one, but you know, you, you had the option of doing this and they, they, it's like memory games, et cetera, et cetera. And it's nice to have a baseline. I mean, I'm nowhere near Joe's age, but you know what? It's nice to have a baseline, right? So I, I'm like, okay, you know, give this a shot and flying colors. Thank you very much. But what's crazy is that somebody who's running the country, the president of the United States of America, I mean, gosh, if you look at that testimony that Robert Hur had, you know, I mean, it's amazing. Like, he couldn't remember anything. He couldn't remember the day his son died, and people are making excuses for that. No, 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 no. I'm sorry, guys. Like, we're not making excuses here. This guy's the president of the United States of America. We're, like, dealing with some stuff with Russia and Ukraine right now. We're dealing with some stuff on the border. We're dealing with stuff in terms of inflation and our economy. You can't sit there and tell me it's all A-OK that, that even if he's struggling with these things, it's absolutely positively fine. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. But, you know, I've said all along, if Democrats were smart, they would have replaced him ages ago. It's hard, though. I mean, think about it. Like, if anybody's ever had an aging parent and you're trying to take the car keys away, good luck. Good luck with that. Because as they get old, as they start to lose, you know, this is sad. I mean, it's just the reality of life, right? You start to lose some of your faculties. It's not fun. It's scary. And you start hanging on. You're hanging on for dear life. And then you get angry. 
You're like, why is everybody trying to do this? So when I saw him in the press conference the other day, shortly after the Her Report, 388 pages came out, and they decided they're not going to file because the guy's too darn old, and therefore a jury wouldn't convict, they just kind of feel bad for him, I thought, my goodness, my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, this is the President of the United States of America, and they're never going to get him out of that seat, no matter how much they want. And believe me, I think they want it. I think the entire Republican Party actually is naive about that to a certain extent. I mean, hey, listen, it'd be great. If you have Kamala Harris running, you know, hey, I, I think that you take that trade all day long. I think G Gavin Newsom would be a different scenario. Even Michelle Obama would be a fresh face on the scene and wouldn't have entirely the baggage that Biden has right now. So I think it's smart for conservatives to actually understand what is out there on the horizon. But this one, I don't think is a winner. And that would be Hillary Clinton. Believe it or not, there are a lot of people right now that would like to see Hillary Clinton running for president for the Democrat Party as opposed to Joe Biden. And there are those that are just sort of quietly out there saying, oh, you know, can we get, can we get some momentum here? Can you imagine? I mean, that would actually be, I think, a, a wonderful thing for Donald Trump. There's, there's probably only two, three people. He like very surely has a, a shot at beating right now at this moment in time. I mean, I do think Gavin would be harder because, you know, he puts on a spiffy image, even though his policy is a disaster, et cetera. Um, I, I do think that Kamala Harris is so beatable, that Joe Biden is so beatable. And then this one, ladies and gentlemen, Hillary Clinton as well. She is so beatable and she's been beaten before, let's face it. Anyway, she's over in Munich at the Munich Security Conference. They're talking about, I mean, just some of the, the, the tough, tough, tough stuff vis-a-vis -vis Ukraine and Russia, et cetera. So she just couldn't resist getting a dig in, like the whole world right now, all of Europe, because of what he said about NATO the other day, et cetera. They're all piling on Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton's helping them coalesce against Trump. Watch her here in Munich. The obvious point to make about Donald Trump is take him literally and seriously. He means what he says. People did not take him literally and seriously in 2016. Now he is telling us what he intends to do. And people who try to wish it away, brush it away, are living in an alternative uh, reality. He will do everything he can to become an absolute authoritarian leader if given the opportunity to do so. I'm sorry, but like, what are they? I mean, they're the ones with the $354 million fine in the city of New York. They're the ones with this crazy Fannie Willis. Oh, we're going to get to that. You know I can't resist that one. Fannie Willis down in Fulton County, Georgia, who's so corrupt. You know, she puts her boyfriend, allegedly, the timing is all, you know, under, under scrutiny right now, in as, as the prosecutor. I mean, it's, it's really kind of amazing. What do you think is going on here? And, and I think that it's fine by Hillary, right? Because as long as she's in charge, as long as the Democrats are in charge, as long as they get to call the shots, then they're perfectly happy to paint this picture of him being, well, I mean, I can't even, I don't even like to say this stuff, right, on the show. The, the analogies that they have put forward, I'm just saying, listen, if you had any loved one that fought in World War II or died in World War II, if you are Jewish and, and you were the victim, as six million were, of, of, of Germany back in the 1930s. I'm sorry, like, listen, it is disrespectful. It is disrespectful to make those kind of comparisons. It's frankly disgusting. And yet that's what she's out there doing. And in Germany of all places. So um, some people are saying, hey, maybe she should run. Maybe she should run for president. Look at this tweet by Gary Kasparov. You know, I like Gary. He's the famous chess player. I, I always think he's interesting to hear from, and he has an interesting perspective, albeit it's always very, very anti-Putin, as long as I've known him. And Gary's writing, just watched Hillary Clinton here in Munich, and she was hawkish and clear-eyed on Putin, Putin and need for Ukraine to defeat Russia. Her energy was good after 90 minutes on stage. My wife and I looked at each other and wondered, well, if Trump 
wants 2024 to be a rematch. It doesn't have to be Biden. And look at that. He's got like 16.6 thousand likes on that. (laughs) So that idea, whether it's coming from the former Russian chess player, right, who's now sort of leading a lot of the opposition to Putin, or whether it's coming from Hillary's circle itself, that one's out there. What do you guys think? You ready for a rematch? Would Trump welcome a rematch? I actually think he would. I think he'd be like, okay, I'll take that. I'll take that trade all day long. I think he should welcome Kamala. And Joe, I think it's a given. Again, just go back to the polls that we are seeing, ladies and gentlemen, right now. You know, I, it's, a, it's a big reason. I don't know if you saw the news today. They're, they're talking about getting rid of their EV plans and their green energy plans. It's been rumored now that the White House is like, oh, gee, this isn't working, <laughs> you think? Um, it's not working because, as, as I've said over and over and over again, it leads to inflation when you cut off Russia's supply of natural gas and then you don't have something to, say, augment it here in the United States, right? Like, so we're cutting off our supply. We're not allowing drilling here, there, and everywhere. We're saying, okay, we're going to go build all these EVs, and we're going to build all of these stations for these EVs, and yet people aren't making this transition in part because they're too cash poor. They don't have the money, and they're, they're getting gouged at the pumps. I mean, there's just a whole variety of things that are going wrong with our energy policy, and a lot of that relates to what's going overseas as well, So we need to be thoughtful. We need to be thoughtful. And it's the reason why I want to encourage you to check out another organization that I love, Americans for Prosperity, americansforprosperity.org, because they are clued into these energy issues. They are clued into the international issues, and they're clued into domestic issues like inflation and the reality of inflation that we have right now. I read a report coming out of Argentina over the weekend. Argentina is at nearly 60% poverty rate. I mean, look. I hate to like overdo it, but I'm not overdoing it. When I say if you continue printing like we've been printing, and then if you suffer as we've been suffering with this influx of migrants that are very much an economic drain on our society, then you're going to run into problems in terms of your domestic economy that you're not going to be able to get away from. And this is why policy matters. Like I hate to be on and on and on about it, but it matters. And people are like, okay, let me just vote for like the sleepy nice guy that hangs out in his basement, as opposed to the person who's talking realistically about the kinds of policies that will benefit America for the future. And that's why you should check out americansforprosperity.org. Again, americansforprosperity.org. There are people that get it. There are people like the woman at SneakerCon. This was just fantastic. You know, Donald Trump, I told you about this earlier in the show, he's there, he's talking, he's talking, and he sees this woman in the audience, and he sees how, I think, emotional she is and how she clearly, I think, adores him. And this was interesting. So often, you have Democrats and politicians in general, both sides. Don't let me, don't let me label one or the other. This is like the MO. They're like, oh, you know, so-and-so sitting in the crowd... You know, he really struggled. He had to do this. He had to do that. You know how they always bring their people and they put them in the crowd somewhere and they tell their story for them? Well, Donald Trump's like, no, hey, you, hey, you lady, come up on stage. So that sort of man on street, that individual character that they love to talk to in the State of the Union, this, that, and the other. Like what's interesting about what Trump often does in some of these rallies, and we're going to show you what he did over the weekend, is he brings that person up onto the stage. He did that with an auto worker, and he did this with a woman. A woman, interesting, because, you know, women are where he's really seeing some challenges right now. Take a peek.
So kind of a special moment. She clearly adores him. You heard it in her voice. And I think that what you heard from her is actually very, very symptomatic of a lot of people around the country. They really feel like, you know what, he's, he's it. Like they, and, and you see the $354 million lawsuit and you're like, he may be, right? Because if we don't get the, the wheels back on the bus, what does that mean for everyone else? Are they just gonna cancel 75 million Americans that voted for Donald Trump? Because, you know, if you dare, if you dare to actually say, oh, you know, maybe he's right on this, that, or the other, they vilify you. And that's what I think effectively is at stake here. I mean, a great example of this vilification was one of the guys at SneakerCon who bought some of those fancy sneakers. So they had all these sneakers, by the way. What were they, like 300 bucks or 399? He's, he's got his sneakers out there. He's selling them. And like people went kind of crazy for him. One person actually paid $9,000 for these autographed sneakers. But um, what was really funny was, take a look, I, I wanna watch this because <laughs> this guy, he buys the sneakers and he's like a, originally from Ukraine, but he's American, he, he grew up here, he came here as a teenager and suddenly like the media is painting him into an oligarch. Now I don't know anything about him, but I wanna play you this clip because He's pretty ticked off, and he made a very spiffy little produced clip to go with just how ticked off he is. I mean, I would be too, right? Suddenly you're a Russian oligarch. Watch. So, bought a pair of sneakers, these sneakers, and apparently they made me a Russian oligarch overnight. Here's how. Guys, I'm a sneakerhead. I'm also a U.S. Army veteran. And yes, I am a Republican. The title of the article read, a Russian oligarch spends $9,000 on sneakers to support Trump. Sounds sketchy, but I actually came from Ukraine. At the time, it was part of the Soviet Union. I came here at the age of 13 as a refugee, but my dad had $4 in his pocket. I busted my ass working every dirty job under the sun to get where I am today in order to be able to afford to buy these $9,000 pair of collectible sneakers. But I guess, the headline of Russian refugee, Ukrainian refugee, or perhaps maybe just a man, that would not get as many clicks as a Russian oligarch. I even saw a tweet from a Ukrainian patriot that said, a Russian shady watch dealer uh, bought $9,000 pair of sneakers as a way to move money to Russia somehow. Of course, I kindly asked the author to uh, check the fact that um, my own charity raised over a quarter million dollars of aid to Ukraine since that war has started before putting out accusations of stupid tweets, if you will. I wasn't trying to make a political statement by buying these shoes. Of course, the internet blew up. I'm getting comments and messages from on IG from people saying, oh, I am no longer following you or I'm unfollowing you because you are a Trump supporter and I'm no longer doing business with you. It's funny, here I am, maybe I'm silly. I thought that people done business with Luxury Bazaar because we've been in business for 21 years because of trust, because of personalized customer service that we provide in great pricing. But I guess I was wrong. You know what saddens me the most about this whole situation is that over something as stupid as a pair of sneakers, it showed me so clearly once again on just how divided our country is. With that said, guys, there's not a mean tweet in the world. There's not an IG post. There's not a news article that's going to stop me from being who I am. And that is a patriot of this country, a country that once let in a 13-year-old immigrant and gave me the opportunity to be where I am today. And I'm going to be thankful for that for the rest of my life. You want to hate me for wanting this country to be great again? Go ahead and judge the sneakerhead. But no matter what, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May sound cliche, but that's how I feel. Thank you, and God bless America. Aww, I really like that guy. Oh my gosh, I got chills as he said that. I seriously did. Good thing I got long sleeves today. Listen, I mean... And, and that's exactly what we risk. I hope he goes and sues every publication that tried to make him out to be a Russian oligarch, assuming he's not one. I mean, for God's sakes, right? This is, this is the dangerous time that we are in. And there's a, 
a hatred and a desire to go after anyone that might actually like Trump. And so, you know, you're a fan, you buy the $9,000 sneakers and then whoopsie daisy, suddenly you get painted in the media as a Russian oligarch. Again, I don't know anything about him, but I found that pretty darn compelling. What do you think? Right? Let me know. Let me know. I mean, I just, I think it's, it, it speaks volumes, ladies and gentlemen. It speaks volumes about how challenged an environment this is. They're talking about $354 million. What do you think every other developer feels like right now? I mean, heck, you can't even buy sneakers. If you buy the sneakers, you're a problem. If you're developing a building, aren't you at risk of, gosh, if, if you voted for Trump, I know developers that are, believe it or not, there are a few conservative developers in New York City that actually like Trump a lot. Are they suddenly at risk of having Letitia James come knocking on their door for nothing because they think their building is worth more than it actually, in her estimation, is worth? I mean, who is she to decide that? And who is the court to level a $354 million? I keep getting back to that. I'm really horrified by it because it's just of all the cases. I mean, they're all kind of out there. Fanny, especially, we're going to talk about that in a second. I mean, look, they're all out there. But in terms of New York City, that's frightening because as Kevin O'Leary rightly said, they're set in a whole new standard. Meanwhile, as much as they try and keep him down, he keeps coming back. Fulton County, Georgia thought they could take down Donald Trump. Fanny Willis thought she could take him down. And it turns out Donald Trump may just take down Fanny Willis. <laughs> That's the reality of the situation at this moment. Let's go back to, I mean, this was the most crazy thing I had ever seen. It, it was nuts. I mean, they, I, I have a lot to say on this, but let's start with Ms. Willis first introducing herself. Fanny Willis, take it away. District, District Attorney Fanny, F-A-N-I, last name is Willis. Um, Ms. Willis, when, how did you know to come into the courtroom right now? <laughs> there were people I was pacing in my office, okay? And, um, All right, I just wanted to get that cleared up. Stuff. It's funny. Because, you know, I care about pronunciation, and I've been saying Fanny, but apparently it's Fanny, something that was not lost, by the way, on Donald Trump when he was out at one of his rallies over the weekend. Take a look at this. Part of it. You saw what happened in Atlanta with Fanny, F-A-N-I, Fanny. How do you pronounce F-A-N-I, Fanny? All right. So you got it. It's funny. I'm going to keep going with Fanny, though, because I don't know. Maybe it's just my American accent kicking in. Um, what was bizarre about this is it, it turns out Fanny keeps a lot of cash at home, apparently. Keeps a lot of cash. She somehow went on a whole bunch of cruises with this guy who was her boyfriend at the time. And one of the things that they're going to try and prove is that she was getting something financially, right? She gained from putting him in this spot underneath her and part of that gain was from the cruises but she's like no 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 i didn't gain anything because i paid my way i paid half my and they're like well how where what why well like where are the receipts and she's like oh i paid in cash and you're like seriously you pay for your cruises to your boyfriend which by the way like he was married and like let's not even go there but anyway we know now they had a relationship um you you pay up in cash I thought Juanita Broderick's Twitter account had literally the best response ever. She sent out this meme. Take a look. And this is, um, Fawny. I'm getting ready for date night. <laughs> I mean, I'm watching this thing and I actually didn't catch it in live time. I was traveling. And so I watched the whole thing after and I'm like, this is a circus show. I mean, a complete, utter circus show. She was angry. She kept taking them off topic over and over and over again. I mean, they thought that Donald Trump was getting his Irish up, so to speak, as we like to say. I can say that I'm Irish. I mean, Fanny, wow. I mean, tell us how you really feel. She was just angry. She was all over the place. At one point, the judge is like, hey, and apparently he used to work for her. He's like, hey, calm down. Calm down, otherwise I'm going to have to throw out your whole testimony. And then you have nothing in your defense. I don't know how she's going to defend herself. Um, is this case going to move forward? I think it's going to move forward for Fanny, but not for Donald Trump. 
Hence the nickname Teflon Trump, because now this is backfiring. It's like a giant boomerang and it's coming and hitting Fanny square in the you know what? I won't say it. I won't say it, but you know what I'm thinking. So she's going to have a problem. She could get disbarred over this. What is going to happen most likely is they're going to make a decision that, hey, they got to cancel the whole thing, right? Which means everyone in her office effectively gets wiped out and they're going to have to start over, which would be bad timing, you see, because now they can't actually take them down in Fulton County, Georgia with Fannie Willis because the timing doesn't work out. I mean, by the time they get a whole new team in there, he might already be in the White House. Yeah. Which is why the ladies on The View feel so strongly, so adamantly, that she didn't do anything wrong. Nothing to see here. That's what they keep telling us. Who is this? A Sonny, Sonny Houston or something declaring, there's no case. There's no there there. Watch her. Jake. I mean, I... <laughs> Okay, so defense attorneys are making the case for what they call a conflict of interest. Meanwhile, the two lawyers prosecuting her, who were questioning yeah, her. They're married. They're married to each other, and yes. they have a uh, law firm together. Yes, they do. So isn't that a conflict of interest, and do they have a problem, do they have a case against mm -hmm. her? They don't have a case against her. I, I think this is certainly just a political move. This is so that Trump can push this and try to kick this case and this can down the, the road so that if he becomes president, God forbid, of the United States, then he's going to say, you can't prosecute me in state court because I'm too busy being, he's not really going to be too busy, but too busy being the president of the United States. So that's what this is really about. Yeah. And mm. Georgia has a law in place that it is not unethical or illegal to have a romantic relationship with co-counsel, even opposing counsel. Can you imagine that? The only thing, because I would imagine in Georgia and all places across the country, men would not be able to practice law. If it were, if it were, so explain. You know, so explain. Oh, wow. Did they, I mean, did so there's audience. excuses, 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 excuses. This is their MO. I, did I not say they're like state media on steroids? By the way, that's owned by ABC, produced by ABC News, news organization, hmm, which is owned by Disney. It's funny, the ABC News producer was the one who put together all that J6 footage so they could tell their story, right, in a compelling way to try and make it like a mini-series. They said that. I, I played that for you the other day. Just outrageous. Really, really, really outrageous. So they're going to try and say, you know what? She didn't do anything wrong. Meanwhile, Fanny's trying to spin you. She's the ultimate victim, right? She's really just the poor black woman who can't get ahead and it's just not fair because you know look she's not perfect she 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 did say that um clip 18 might be 19 I, I may have my numbers wrong drew but you know the one where she's like i'm not a perfect human being i need to be forgiven blah 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 this is she's accepting ladies and gentlemen she's accepting the black history achievement award whoo this is a really hard job I'm trying to do. And I am an imperfect human being, but I can literally feel the people who love me's prayers. If just every now and again, you'll throw my name in a prayer, God hears his children. I would very much appreciate that. So I thank you for this honor today. Um, not perfect, clearly not perfect. Of course, she was willing to go after her predecessor. In fact, one of the reasons that she wanted to run for her position was she said the people of Fulton County deserved a DA that wasn't going to be having uh, <clears throat> affairs with employees. We got it on tape, for goodness sakes. Watch. Because they deserve a DA that won't have sex with his employees. Because they deserve a DA that won't put money in their own pocket when it should go to benefit children. Because we deserve better. Hmm. But really, you know, it's, it's everyone else's fault that somehow this is all getting exposed. And really, it's just that she's a woman and that she's African American. I mean, her dad said it. Hey, her dad's like, hey, you guys just don't get the culture. Of course she was paying this guy in cash. This is one of the, the also just bizarre moments. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Council. When your daughter moved or left the house that she owned, did, did she say anything to you about having a large uh, 
savings of cash? Oh, no, she, oh, no. See, maybe, excuse me, and I, Your Honor, I'm not trying to be racist, okay? But it's a black thing, okay? You know, I was trained, and most black folks, they hide cash, or they keep cash, and uh, I was no, I train. You always keep some cash because uh, I've been places, and just because of the color of my skin. For example, I took a fellowship at Harvard when my daughter was just a, a if I might, Your Honor, if I might, when I was just, uh, she was just, you know. Poor, poor Fanny. This is this is where she's going. Okay, so it's a racial thing. It's a woman thing. Her dad's in on the act. He's a former attorney, may still be practicing. He's actually also a former Black Panther. And um, it, it's, this, is, this is where they're going. But I'll tell you, she better have something better than that because she may be, is, is actually Laura Loomer out of Florida was just speculating she might actually be in trouble from a campaign finance perspective. In other words, this is bigger than you think Take a look at this clip that, that Loomer tweeted out. I, I want you to see this one. But I always have cash at the house. That has been, I don't know, all my life. If you're a woman and you go on a date with a man, you better have $200 in your pocket. So if that man acts up, you can go where you want to go. So I keep cash in my house. And I don't keep cash as good in my purse like I used to. Um, I, I don't go on many dates. But when you go on a date, you should have cash in your pocket. So my question was, where did that cash originally come from? If it didn't cash come out of the bank? Cash is uh, fungible. I had cash for years in my house. So for me to tell you the source of when it comes from, when you go to Publix and you buy something, you get $50, you throw it in there. When it's been my whole life. When I took out a large amount of money on my first campaign, I kept some of the cash of that. Like, to tell you, mm. I just have cash in my okay. house. I don't have as much to do. So I, I think this is where people are going. She said she took out a large amount of money for her campaign and she had all this cash. So then the question is going to become, okay, like, oh, it's your personal money. Fine. But were you reimbursed? So now they have an opportunity, a window to start digging and say, okay, let's take a look at her campaign finances. What was she really spending money on? So it's now no longer how many cruises did you go on with the boyfriend that you hired? You know, the, the timing is still all alleged. <laughs> it's not just that. It's like, wait a second. Like, that was your money? And then how did that get commingled with campaign finance money? And that, I mean, she, she clearly is not that bright because she just threw it out there. I mean, she's clearly not bright, right? I mean, you listen to that testimony and you're like, oh, my goodness. I mean, taste in men. <laughs> Right? That alone shows you there's not a lot upstairs in poor Fanny Willis's, Fanny Willis's head. I'm sorry. This is just a train wreck. But the funny part about it is that it's coming back full circle to help Donald Trump. I have some great video, some great video I want to show you, the NYPD. They have some ladies there that, that are dancers now. Um, don't worry, it's all clean, <laughs> but it's bizarre and i also want to go back to the sneaker con and that guy like clearly you guys have some thoughts on that and, and we'll weigh in in the chat but before we do a quick word from one of our wonderful new sponsors here on the trish regan show you know how much i care about my health so listen to this and we're coming back with the nypd dancers and sneaker con how do you feel i feel great i mean i really do and i think part of the reason i feel so good is because I take balance of nature in a capsule form. I take the fruits and veggies. This stuff is really good. You know, this is just an amazing company. They have a terrific history, phenomenal history. It was developed by Dr. Douglas Howard. You can read all about it on the website. Balance of Nature receives over a thousand success stories every single month. They get thousands, hundreds of thousands of customers who have purchased billions of capsules of their fruits and veggies, like I take, over the past 20 years. You can check it all out right there online on their website. Their products are gluten-free and non-GMO, and they contain no added sugars or synthetics. I think if you're looking for something that makes you feel a little bit better naturally, then you should definitely give this a shot. Definitely give them a try. You can give them a ring. 
You can use my name. Make sure you use my name, actually, because you're going to get much more off if you use my name. 35% off with code word Trish. Just give them a ring at 1-800-2468-751. 1-800-2468-751. You use discount code Trish. You can order online at balanceofnature.com. But again, use the discount code because it's more than you're going to get anywhere else. 35% off. Discount code Trish. Balanceofnature.com. Check them out. <laughs> David David's asking, wait, does that stuff really work? I can tell you that, uh, yeah, I've, I've taken it for the last I don't know, month and a half or so. It's, it's pretty good. Um, you know, I, I just, I, vitamins, vitamins matter. They're important. Um, anyway, in my view. In my view, again, you do you, I do me. I'm just telling you what works for me. And hey, you get a better discount if you use my name. So let's, uh, let's, let's go back to um, what I wanted to show you, which is just incredible because the New York Police Department, they get a lot of problems, right? They get all kinds of issues. They get illegal migrants beating them up in Times Square. They've got all kinds of like enormous increases in crime overall, but they need to get, you know, their stress out of them too, right? So <laughs> here are the ladies of the NYPD. Take a peek, everyone. They're doing their thing, dancing. We're not going to play the music, but we are going to show you their moves. What do you think of this one? <laughs> so if you're watching on screen, if you're listening on Apple iTunes, terrific, thank you. If you're watching on screen, um, there were a lot of snarky comments about this. I just did the, the health food supplement thing, so you know, you know how I care about health. Um, there were a lot of snarky comments, like, why aren't we bringing back physical fitness standards for the police, etc.? Anyway, they, they have this little dance routine and somehow got convinced to do this on the local news. Like, I don't know what they were thinking. Like, where's their head of PR? You got major problems in the city of New York. And you're going to say, oh, yeah, hey, ladies, go do a dance on the local New York City television station? Like, you think that that's going to help? So, look, it's gone totally viral. Everybody's making fun of it for a whole lot of reasons. But actually... Aside from the laughs, like think about just exactly where the priorities are. I and mean, this is the entire problem. This is going to get us back to DEI and this, that, and the other, because this is the problem with America right now. Like instead of actually focusing on your job, which is to keep us safe, you're more interested in the dance routine. Or instead of focusing on profitability as a corporation, you're more focused on making sure you've got all these different boxes checked. Your board of directors has, you know, a man, a woman, a, a, a gay person, a trans, somebody with purple hair. I mean, enough already, right? It's, it's become too much. And this fundamentally is a huge problem that we just have to get away from. Look, we're a meritocracy. The guy from Ukraine can come here when he's 13 years old and grow up to be able to buy the $9,000 sneakers at SneakerCon because it's still the United States of America. And we need to keep it that way, right? Again, amazing what happened to him. I want to look at some of your comments and just weigh in, but maybe Drew can cue that one up for us again because it's just so good. So, bought a pair of sneakers, these sneakers. And apparently, they made me a Russian oligarch overnight. Here's how. <laughs> Guys, I'm a sneakerhead. I'm also a U.S. Army veteran, and yes, I am a Republican. The title of the article read, A Russian oligarch spends $9,000 on sneakers to support Trump. Sounds sketchy, but I actually came from Ukraine. At the time, it was part of the Soviet Union. I came here at the age of 13 as a refugee, but my dad had $4 in his pocket. I busted my ass working every dirty job under the sun to get where I am today in order to be able to afford to buy these $9,000 pair of collectible sneakers. But I guess the headline of Russian refugee, Ukrainian refugee, or perhaps maybe just a man, that would not get as many clicks as a Russian oligarch. I even saw a tweet from a Ukrainian patriot that said, a Russian shady watch dealer uh, bought $9,000 pair of sneakers as a way to move money to Russia somehow. Of course, I kindly asked the author to uh, check 
the fact that um, my own charity raised over a quarter million dollars of aid to Ukraine since that war has started before putting out accusations of stupid tweets, if you will. I wasn't trying to make a political statement by buying these shoes. Of course, the internet blew up. I'm getting comments and messages from on IG from people saying, oh, I am no longer following you or I'm unfollowing you because you are a Trump supporter and I'm no longer doing business with you. It's funny, here I am, maybe I'm silly. I thought that people done business with Luxury Bazaar because we've been in business for 21 years because of trust, because of personalized customer service that we provide in great pricing. But I guess I was wrong. You know what saddens me the most about this whole situation is that over something as stupid as a pair of sneakers, it showed me so clearly once again on just how divided our country is. With that said, guys, there's not a mean tweet in the world. There's not an IG post. There's not a news article that's going to stop me from being who I am. And that is a patriot of this country, a country that once let in a 13-year-old immigrant and gave me the opportunity to be where I am today. And I'm going to be it's thankful great. Listen, for that it's great. For the rest I'm of my playing life. it again because it's just me? that great. And I'm going to tell you, you know what? <laughs> Donald Trump should thank him, like, big time. That is amazing. And, you know, in a way, in a weird, twisted way, Donald Trump has the media to thank, too, because assuming he is who he says he is. Again, I don't know anything. But I'm watching this going, this poor guy, I mean, they're trying to call him a Russian oligarch and he like came here as a 13 year old kid from Ukraine and happened to make it good and can afford the $9,000 sneakers and clearly a well-produced video. (laughs) Yeah, that that was good, right? Admit it, it was good. Hey, make sure you like this, smash the like buttons. I'm using a direct quote from Don who's in the chat. He said, Trish, make sure you tell them to smash the like buttons. I always forget to tell you guys to do this, but subscribe, subscribe to the channel, smash the like, bo- the like buttons. And by the way, it's like party today because we are over 200,000 on this channel. Every single bit of this has been totally organic, totally natural. Thank you to all of you for being here, for being big supporters, because all those likes and all those shares and all those subscribes, it adds up, it means something. And we're actually turning into a real little Trish Vegan channel, are we not? Right? So many of you had joined the team. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for that. I thank you for being curious. Right? You have to be curious to really know what's going on right now. Because if you take what the mainstream media gives you, it's just slop. They're feeding you slop. And they're not telling you the entire story. And I promise you, you know, sometimes you won't like it. Sometimes you guys totally, totally adamantly disagree with me. And I get it. We, but we do that in this space, right? But I will always tell you the truth as I see it. And I will do my darndest to make sure you see all sides. I'm not like the reporter at the New York Times that says, okay, let me tell you, wages are going up, inflation's going down. I'm like, no, no, you actually have to present real wages, real wages, a adjusted for inflation. I mean, this is like ABC stuff for anybody who's covered the economy. Look, there's a lot of spin going on. And so it's great that you're here. Spread the word. Oh my gosh, we have huge numbers today. Huge numbers, like over 2,000 watching live right now before it's all said and done. It's going to grow and grow and grow and multiply. And that's thanks to you guys. So thank you. Go check out the podcast on Apple Podcasts and I'll see you tomorrow.